Welcome to Tab Briefs, a weekly look at headlines from the world of faith for May 8, 2020. I'm Tab Media Content Editor Carrie McWhorter, and the top three headlines that grabbed our attention this week are the arrests of two men and the death of a young black man in Georgia killed while jogging. The Supreme Court again considers religious exemptions from the contraceptives mandate of the Affordable Care Act and prayer observances, prayer observances in the time of COVID-19. Our top story this morning. Arrests were made yesterday in the death of Ahmad Arbery, a 25-year-old black man who was shot and killed while jogging in Brunswick, Georgia. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation charged Gregory McMichael and his adult son, Travis McMichael, with murder and aggravated assault yesterday. The charges came more than 10 weeks after Arbery's death, but just days after a video of the shooting surfaced and quickly went viral, drawing national attention to Arbery's death. Todd Rhodes, an African-American pastor in Brunswick, said the community has been under an atmosphere of great tension and anger, and also a sense of disbelief because of the time it took to bring charges in Arbery's death. Chris Winford, pastor of First Baptist Church Brunswick, who is white, met with an ecumenical, racially diverse group of fellow pastors early yesterday to draft a letter encouraging swift justice in the, in the case in response to the video, which Winford called disturbing and painful. National Southern Baptist leaders have offered similar sentiments, including Southern Baptist Convention President J.D. Greer, SBC First Vice President Marshall Osbury, SBC Executive Committee President Ronnie Floyd, and Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission President Russell Moore. Writing in a blog post, Moore said, under any Christian vision of justice, there is no situation in which the mob murder of a person can be morally right. The Bible tells us from the beginning that murder is not just an assault on the person killed, but on the God whose image he or she bears. SBC First Vice President Marshall Osbury, who also leads the National African American Fellowship of the SBC, said the case should disturb all of America, not just Black America. And in a Twitter video posted Wednesday, J.D. Greer referenced Galatians 6.2 and said it is understandable that African Americans are especially hurt by the tragedy because of historical injustices they have suffered. Terrence Jones, pastor of Strong Tower at Washington Park in Montgomery, wrote about the video on Facebook and said people of color want to know where is the justice before and after the video. Jones wrote about the fear he has experienced himself as a black man and urged prayer for the families and for lasting and systemic change in our systems in view of each other. Next up, the U.S. Supreme Court once again hears arguments on the contraceptives mandate of the ACA. Meeting by telephone conference call, justices heard arguments in a case pitting an order of Roman Catholic nuns against federal rules that require employers to provide birth control to employees. The case continues a seven-year legal battle brought by the fought by the Little Sisters of the Poor, a Catholic order of nuns that serves the poor and elderly. The nuns have been fighting to gain an exemption for, from federal rules that require employers to provide workers with coverage for contraceptives, including those that can potentially induce abortions. The Trump administration and the nuns urge justices to uphold federal rules that protect the rights of employers with religious or moral objections to the contraceptives mandate. The Supreme Court has previously ruled that the government can ensure access to contraceptives without employers providing them, but Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and other states have challenged the interim regulations issued by the Trump administration. And finally, yesterday marked the 69th annual National Day of Prayer. The day looked different this year, but even as events went virtual, prayer remained the focus. Participants took to Zoom and other video conference platforms, but they also adapted by conducting prayer walks, prayer drives, driving prayer meetings, and at-home Bible readings. Many of our own TAB Media staff members participated in Birmingham's Bible Reading Marathon at home yesterday, reading the Bible aloud in and around our homes and at the TAB office in Homewood. This year's theme was Pray God's Glory Across the Earth, based on Habakkuk 2.14. 
A replay of the National Observance broadcast is available at nationaldayofprayer.org, on the National Day of Prayer Facebook page, and at other media outlets. Despite restrictions on gatherings, National Day of Prayer spokesperson Dion Elmore said millions were expected to participate. And during the past few weeks, other prayer efforts have been a source of connection for Baptists around the nation and in Alabama. On Tuesday, a national prayer event called Praying on the Mountain was held via video conference. The effort was the idea of 95-year-old pastor and World War II veteran Fred Lunsford of North Carolina. More than a quarter of a million people have committed to pray for spiritual awakening in America as a result of Lunsford's call to prayer. And in Alabama, a prayer call held at 10 a.m. each Wednesday morning has brought hundreds of Alabama Baptists together to pray for the spiritual, physical, and emotional needs of our state and nation. How are you staying connected to your church and community through prayer during this time? Drop your ideas in the comments or email us at news at thealabamabaptist.org. We'd love to hear from you. Those are your tab briefs for May 8, 2020. To read more about these and other stories from the world of faith-based news, go to tabonline.org. And while you're there, check out our podcasts, Tab Talks, Tab News, Tab Briefs, and coming soon, Tab Stories. Thanks for watching and join us again next Friday.